Hi, it's Sarah from Midnight Butterfly Designs and today we're going to be making a garden tiger moth cane. We're using various colours here, it's all Scarpy Primo and the list will be in the description um, as will a rough estimate of the mixes. We're going to be using standard tools here, so my acrylic roller, exacto knife, tissue blade and also my little knitting needle tool it can be useful for just getting those tiny little areas really sharp um, and also creating curves when we need to. I'd also recommend you use a pasta machine only because otherwise Skinner blends take forever. So first we're going to make a Skinner blend out of the dark and the pale brown. This is just to add interest in the upper wing. Um, if you look on the upper wing it is basically cream and brown. Um, what we want to do is just create a little bit more interest in the brown. So to make the Skinner blend we're going to cut both the dark brown and the lighter brown into rectangles, cut those in half diagonally, stack the same colour on top of the same colour and then push the two together. When we run this through the pasta machine a few times you'll see that it will turn into a gradient. That's what we want from a Skinner blend is a nice neat gradient from one colour to the next. So before you put it through the pasta machine make sure the two colours are really squished together and make sure you're always folding it the same way. Now with this one you could either fold it top to bottom or side to side but make sure that you're folding it the same way every single time you fold that piece of clay and you will get a nice gradient. This is sort of the midpoint uh, of the Skinner blend. I would still fold it um, the same way to get a nice neat gradient as you can see here. This would be the finished gradient that you're looking for. To make the stack we are going to make a tape so you want to fold your big sheet in half to make a long length like this. Run it through the pasta machine on the next uh, setting, the next thinner setting to create a tape like this. Because we are going to be using a long bit of clay do cut it in half and then run it through the thinner setting that you dare. I tend to leave it on A4 on my pasta machine. Then we're going to fold the tape, so we're going to fold it a bit like a concertina, old, old style kind of fan shape uh, and we're going to do this from the dark side to the lighter side. Remember to stack the two pieces in the appropriate fashion i.e. from the darker side to the lighter side if that's the way you're doing it and you're following how I'm doing it. You can see here it's not a perfect gradient all the way down uh, but it doesn't really matter in butterflies too much especially with this one as we really want it just to look a bit more organic. Flat colours don't really exist too much in nature so what we're trying to do is just get a bit of variation for the brown in the top wing. So once you've got your plug, uh, which is the special name that this particular uh, shape is given, um, we're going to stretch it out and reduce it a little bit. We're going to use bits of this cane, it's not going to be like we're going to stack it all in one place, we're going to use bits of the cane to create interest. So we want a long length, but we want it about 2 centimeters in width. So from the brown, dark brown rather, to the pale, you want it about 2 centimeters. Now this next bit is the tricky bit, so I suggest you draw yourself a template. As you can see here, I'm using mine. We're going to roll out bits of the cream and fill in the spaces in between where the brown is going to sit. This will take you a lot of time. Believe it or not, this was actually most of the video um, originally that I had to cut out, obviously. Otherwise, you would have seen 30 minutes of me just putting this together in ultra fast mode. So what you want to do is you want to build it really slowly and do it from one side. So I tend to build wings from the inner side of the wing, from the point where the body meets the, the wing. Um, so I started with a lump of cream and then I've just added, using the sausage technique, various bits of cream. When I've been adding the brown in, I've just been slicing a little bit of the cane off and shaping it where I need to, to make sure it's a similar shape um, and pattern as my template and then filling any gaps with more cream clay. The way to get a curve with the brown is to make curves with your needle tool or whatever small round tool you have. Fill that gap then with cream 
and it will give the illusion that the brown is curving uh, when actually you've just mashed a bit of white clay into the brown there. There are some larger chunks of brown as you can see this bit is right on the end and I just wanted to make sure it really fitted into that curve so I took some time to make sure the shape fit the wing. Really do take your time with this top wing, honestly the effect is 100% worth it, it is worth the time and effort you put into it as you can see. Okay so onto the bottom wing and we're going to create a Skinner blend between the orange and the white. We don't want um, the tip of the wing to be white, but we do want it to have a really nice orange tinge to it. I really want a faded effect. So there's going to be more bright orange on the outside of the wing, and then as you go in toward the body, it's going to be paler. That's the effect that we want here. So you build the Skinner Blend the same way that you did the first one, by layering up two sheets of the same colour into triangles, sticking them together really good, then folding them the same way time after time and putting through them through the pasta machine. Then you want to make a tape by folding it in half or trying to make it as neat as possible and cutting off any rough edges. Pop it through the pasta machine. It doesn't have to be on a thin setting for this one because the gradient needn't be too subtle. You can make it quite obvious. And then again just concertina that so that it creates a plug going from pale orange to dark orange. What we want to do as well, because this is only quite a shallow gradient, is we want to add extra orange onto the orange end. So all I did was roll out some more orange on a thicker setting, got rid of the scrap on the end of the plug, and then just folded some more orange on the end of it. We are actually going to add even more orange to this, but I wanted it to be more of a curve than just on the end in sort of a square shape because obviously the wing is not a square shape. So the first thing I do was I shaped that particular plug. I even cut a little bit off at the, at the front as you can see, um, just so I sort of knew what I was looking at. Then I added some more orange around it. I really wanted to get that orange into the wing because if you look at the butterfly, oh sorry, the moth, it is really vibrant uh, despite the fact that it's a moth because moths generally are quite brown but this one has a beautiful vibrant orange and I really wanted to play to that so I added more orange on the bottom just to make it just to make it sort of extra orange so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build a speckled cane so this grey glittery clay um, I rolled out into a relatively thick sausage and then covered in the navy clay it's to imitate the sort of iridescence in the eyes um, on this particular moth and I think it works really really well. Feel free to use something that doesn't have glitter in, that's absolutely fine, but I really like the effect of this. So I rolled this out relatively thin, cut off some bits from it, rolled it out even thinner, cut off some more bits, making sure that all the bits are roughly the same length, which I tend to do two or three centimetres. Then we stick them all together, we reduce that cane, cut it up again, stick those together and just reduce it and you come up with a beautiful sort of speckled effect cane which you'll see in a minute. It's a very easy cane to make. I tend to use this what I've termed speckle canes um, in a lot of the butterflies because it gives it a sort of a texture, a really subtle texture that is really good in these um, butterflies and is quite um, a regular occurrence in, in a lot of the butterflies that I've done in the past. Not that I've done too many for this particular challenge but there will be more so get used to the speckle cane make sure you're happy with its process um, because it's a really good easy way to create something that looks really organic so after adding all those pieces together and just reducing it for the last time I just wrap it in an extra bit of blue the iridescence of the eyes are more blue than they are grey so I really want to just make that pop a little bit and there is an extra sort of blue band around it. On the one that I was using, on the reference I was using, there was a yellow edge to this particular eye. A lot of the moss also have a black edge so you could substitute the yellow for the black but I really enjoyed the pop of colour on this so I decided to use yellow. 
So you're going to wrap the blue speckle cane in that and then reduce it so that it fits your wing. So what I find quite useful to do is draw on the wing from my reference picture where various items are going to be. You'll have seen this on previous videos where I will have drawn veins on top of the wing. You just need some sort of blunt ball tool or uh, baking tool, whatever, whatever's easiest for you. The easiest way I've found to insert things into the wing is to literally just cut a slice off, cut the area out. Um, of where I'm going to put the new thing, um, smooth it down and then add the new thing. The thing with just making a hole rather than reducing the amount of clay in your cane is that your cane will just get really big. Now I tend to keep my top wing and my bottom wing roughly the right size for each other because otherwise I find once I've finished the canes that I've got too much of one and too much of the other. Um, I can end up with a lot of bottom wings that way. So I tend to debulk the cane by just cutting a section out before I add anything in there. If you take too much out of your cane and you find there's a gap, please feel free to just add some more clay in there. doesn't really matter if it's a slightly different gradient because these are moths and butterflies. They're not perfect creatures, although we might think they are sometimes. They're really not. They do have their own flaws within their wings. So just, just add a little bit more. It won't take away from the overall effect. And once you've reduced it down to the size that you're going to use it anyway, it's going to look phenomenal. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. There were six eyes for me to basically put into this wing um, and I didn't think you really wanted to watch all of them on slow-mo. So this is the speeded up version and I hope you can sort of see what I'm trying to do here by um, changing the shape of the cane and the size of the cane. The variation that you put in is, is quite important. You don't want uniform six eyes. That wouldn't look so great on the bottom wing. But if you create a difference, even though they're the same colours, it really does give a great effect. So the last thing to do with this moth is just give it its yellow edge. So you want to roll out a piece of yellow clay, try and make a tape of it. Um, if you can't, then just cut a straight edge so that you can then wrap it around your cane. You want to start it about halfway down the bottom wing, bottom part of the wing, um, and then sort of almost all the way to the tip of the other one, leaving maybe a centimeter or so from the inner wing. Just give it a nice trim, shape it up, and then show it off to all your friends and family. And so there you go, there's your garden tiger moth cane. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it like to get involved with more butterfly projects check out my facebook page midnight butterfly designs until then happy clay